just as you are to worship um, just as you are before your God um, one day every tongue will confess you are God one day Just as you are, come, come. Good morning, Journey, and we are absolutely delighted that you are here with us on this day. I'm happy to have some new people with us this morning, a special shout out to all of you. If you're on Zoom, your greeter for today is Wendy. So um, feel free to put something in that comment section um, in the chat and uh, feel free to throughout the service, chat with each other. Um, you can use that feature. If you're on Facebook, um, Cindy is your greeter today. So 
she'll be um, chatting back and forth with you there. Feel also feel free to use that comment section um, at any time. In fact, now's a great time for you to put some kind of um, message, emoji, something to let us know that you're with us. Otherwise, we may, you know, kind of miss you. And then you get a call from the pastor this week wondering where you were. So, you know, just one of those things. Unless you want to call from the pastor, then then you know, ignore that whole thing. And we welcome our worship assistant for today is Kathy Parker. So we're delighted that she'll be sharing with us our readings um, in a moment. So we um, are now on our second week of this series that we've been doing. We have um, been each week focusing on a different aspect of mental health. Um, it's part of us living into our wise covenant that we um, approved way back in January, seems like forever ago now. Um, and we are, so each week we're, we're trying to figure out what it means for us to be welcoming um, and inclusive, supportive and engaging um, for people with mental health um, issues, whether it's themselves or a family member. So today um, we're gonna be looking at the story um, of Jesus' interaction with his followers from John on eight um, in a little um, message that I'm gonna, um, I totally stole, totally, totally stole the, the title, Keeping It 100. I stole the title from Amani Jones, who is the co-pastor of Advent UCC in Columbus, Ohio. So thanks, Amani, for um, for triggering um, this uh, this week's theme, and we're gonna our, our weekly theme is is trauma and PTSD. So we're gonna focus a little bit on that um, later on with a with a video. So um, that's where we're going. I'm gonna turn it over to Kathy now, and she's gonna get you started with our gathering words. And this week they're from Psalm 66. Your parts are gonna appear in purple. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are invited here today to bless and to praise God. We will let the sound of God's praise be heard loud and clear from every one of us. Somehow, despite all the pitfalls along the way, all the trials and tribulations in each of our lives, God has kept us among the living. We have been confined and burdened. We have walked through fire and water. We have been tested to the max, but now we have become as true as silver. God has heard me because in my heart, I cherish truth and not wickedness. God hears us all and continues to love us with a steadfast and undying love. Please join me in prayer. Holy one, <clears throat> we are all seekers. No matter where we are in the world, no matter what our strengths or weaknesses, no matter what our language or our creed, you seek us out with the eternal parental love of the creator. No matter that you are always present with us and for us, no matter that we do not always recognize the form, no matter that we may have a dimness of sight as in a mirror, we continue to seek you with the unquenchable human desire to know you and to rest in you. In you, we live and move and have our being. Guide us now to recognize that trust as we gather together with you. Amen. <clears throat> Somebody's knocking at your door. Somebody's knocking at your door. Oh, sinner, why don't you answer? Somebody's knocking at your door. That's like Jesus. Somebody's knocking at your door. Somebody's knocking at your door And you 
went down to the Jordan to be baptized by John When the heavens opened up, the spirit came down like a dove A voice called from heaven said, you love and I am pleased And the people who were watching all fell down to their knees Jesus then was tempted forty days and forty nights And the angels stayed beside him as he struggled in the fight We all have our struggles, the wilderness is vast But the everlasting God will be a beacon that will last No matter who we are, what we did, what's our story God will meet us and accept us and fill us with the glory Jesus calls you somebody's knocking at your door Jesus calls you somebody's knocking at your door Oh sinner, why don't you answer somebody's knocking at your door Can't you trust him somebody's Someone's knocking at your door, somebody's ringing the bell. Somebody's knocking at the door, somebody's ringing the bell. Do me a favor, open the door and let them in. Yeah. Amen. Hope you're wide awake now. So Kathy's coming back on and she's going to share our reading um, for the day from John 8. Again, Jesus said to them, I will go away. You will look for me, but you will die in your sins. You cannot go where I am going. So the Jewish authorities said, he says that we cannot go where he is going. Does this mean that he will kill himself? Jesus answered, you belong to this world here below, but I come from above. You are from this world, but I am not from this world. That is why I told you that you will die in your sins, and you will die in your sins if you do not believe that I am who I am. Who are you? They asked him. Jesus answered, what I have told you from the very beginning. I have much to say about you, much to condemn you for. The one who sent me, however, is truthful and I will tell the world only what I have heard from him. They did not understand what Jesus was talking to them about, that, that Jesus was talking to them about the Father. So he said to them, when you lift up the Son of Man, you will know that I am who I am. Then you will know that I do nothing on my own authority, but I say only what the Father has instructed me to say. And he who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone because I always do what pleases him. Many who heard Jesus say these things believed in him. So Jesus said to those who believed in him, if you obey my teaching, you are really my disciples. You will know the truth and the truth will set you free. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. More light, more truth is breaking from your world. More light, more truth. Holy Spirit, help us hear what needs to be heard.
So we, we live in this incredibly weird and perplexing time when the word and this whole idea of truth, and I kind of almost want to put it in air quotes, is controversial. The truth has been debated. The truth has been manip manipulated. And let's face it, the truth, whatever that is, has been politicized as well. It's kind of unfortunate, I think, because the truth stands at the heart of our faith community. We know that being part of the United Church of Christ, we have this little phrase that we um, refer to in terms of social justice. In, we call it speaking truth to power because we know that that truth can be a powerful tool in social justice and in our efforts. The United Church of Christ also has this other saying, this pithy little thing that goes like this, speaking the truth in love. Because we know sometimes the truth is hard to hear and we don't wanna just be up in people's face about it. We wanna speak the truth, but in a kind and loving way that doesn't hurt them. Even Journey, um, in our core values, you can go to our website sometime and check that all out. Um, when we were establishing what, um, what our faith community would be built upon, um, decided that one of the key things would be authentic relationships. Um, and we defined it this way, being part of a faith community is all about relationships. The relationships we have with God and the relationships that we have in others and then this, we are committed to building authentic relationships of encouragement and accountability where truth, speaking the truth in love is kind of at the heart. In our faith community, both in our local faith community and in our wider denomination, we have this focus on keeping it real or what in pop, in pop culture might be referred to as keeping it 100. And once again, totally stole the idea from Amani Jones of Advent UCC in Columbus, Ohio. We wanna keep it 100% accurate and truth. But sometimes that's hard, right? Because um, sometimes, and, and I think particularly when it comes to issues related to mental health, it's a challenge, this whole idea of truth. Mostly, I think, because there is so much untruth about mental health. There's lots of myths. There's all sorts of stigmas attached. And, and we have been told, particularly within the church, a lot of untrue things when it comes to mental health issues. But then there's this also cha another challenge that makes it really hard to keep it 100%. And that, that is because sometimes even when we tell the real truth, the 100% truth, it's difficult, right? And sometimes it makes us all a little bit uncomfortable to have those conversations because we're not necessarily used to that kind of thing. The ministry and the message of Jesus offers to us, I think, some insights about the value of knowing and telling the truth. And particularly, I think, the freedom that emerges from such knowledge. The sacred story that we shared today, and let's face it, it's a little, uh, it's a little confusing, this truth. The sacred story is based on the reality that, that the people who have been following Jesus want to know who he is. He's, they've been following him around, and they're, they're really, really intrigued by the miracles that he performs um, and the healing stories that they've heard about. Um, they, they like his message, the message that outsiders are in and the insiders are sometimes out and kind of turns things upside down. Um, but there is now this growing dispute about who Jesus is. They've heard his message, they've seen his actions, and there's, well, there's just confusion. And so they come to him seeking the truth about Jesus. Who are you? 
they ask, we want to know. They want to understand the truth. What they've seen and what they've heard has been confusing. It has left some of them skeptical. And now Jesus wants to keep it 100 with them. He wants to tell them the truth about who he is. And we know from experience, we kind of followed that, I think, in our Lenten series, um, when we um, followed Jesus through the Gospel of Mark and John. We know that once even Jesus, when he, when he tells them who, who he is, and he shows them clearly that he's come here not only to heal and to teach and to do these miracles, but that he is the Son of God, he is the divine, and that eventually what he says and what he's done will will lead to his demise that people will feel so threatened by that that he will be killed but then he also tells them i will come back to life and we know that they never get it they're always confused he keeps it a hundred but they 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 don't embrace that all the time and so jesus finds it difficult sometimes for people to understand and and really truly embrace and appreciate the truth of who he is and and it's it's kind of ironic actually because what most threatens them what what confuses them the most what causes them to be most skeptical is the very thing that they should be embracing so that they can experience the the freedom from all of the tumultuous feelings that are raging within them. And that experience of Jesus, this dialogue, this ongoing controversy with Jesus, I think is really a good analogy for our experience and our conversations about mental health. And what happens when mental illness is revealed? There are feelings of confusion and skepticism and denial. The truth about mental illness can be, be front and center and all the signs can be present, but it might be difficult for us to embrace and to hear, and it might be difficult for us to accept and move on. So consider these examples, if you will, for a minute. You notice a dramatic shift in the mood and the overall attitude of your partner. It's difficult, right? You recognize what seems to be uncontrollable anxiety in your child. It may be the truth, but it's difficult. You witness the social withdrawal and isolation of your teen from both themselves and from others, and you wonder what's going on. It's the truth, but it's hard. You become aware of your friend's excessive use of drugs and alcohol and you kind of want to deny it, but it's the truth and it needs to be embraced. You yourself experience feelings of sadness and a, a lack of motivation, and, and you don't really want to engage in the world around you. You feel like you're having a light bulb moment about what might be really going on with your mental health, but it's difficult. All of those are examples of warning signs that can potentially point to the truth, the truth, the 100% of mental illness. The signs may sometimes be there, but due to the narratives that have conditioned so many of us to dismiss and reject mental illness, we don't quite see what's in front of us sometimes. We don't, we don't see the truth. And then if we even see the truth, embracing that narrative is a struggle. Real mental health issues are difficult. And that's where the story about Jesus and the power of truth the power of truth that Jesus invites his audience of his day to embrace comes to us again. This is what he says. You will know the truth. You will know the truth and the truth will set you free. 
knowing the truth, embracing the truth, understanding the truth about mental illness is our road to freedom. Doing our homework, embracing the truth to, in order to gain a better understanding of mental illness can be so helpful in creating a new narrative for how we understand all of the realities and the complexities. It starts with asking questions. And being open to the answers as we discover um, new knowledge, all of the knowledge that's out there. Speaking with healthcare professionals about our mental health issues and concerns can be on the road to freedom. Connecting with others who have a shared personal experience with mental health issues can, can shed light on that path to freedom, reaching out to mental health networks and organizations in the community provide strength for the journey. Trusting and talking with, with friends and family members about what they might be going through can help tremendously because we recognize we're on that journey to freedom together. Gaining knowledge through all of these measures are so important as we take those first steps and continuing steps towards our walk of freedom. Rather than ask, acting and talking on the passive that says, the less I know, the better, I don't wanna know. Talking, taking a more active approach can bring us freedom. Knowing the truth first of all, can debunk oftentimes the myths that are associated with mental illness. People who know the truth, when you know the truth, you can reject the notion that mental, that mental illness is different than other, quote, real illnesses like heart disease or diabetes. People who know the truth can choose not to believe that those symptoms, you know, can be prayed away or willed away, like we oftentimes have said in the church. People who know the truth can decide not to accept this idea that there's no hope. Keeping it 100 can open pathways to treatment and help and ultimately change the course of a person's life. Knowing the truth about mental illness can actually set us free from a lot of the fears that plague us in the context of mental illness. It's often the fear of the unknown that is most frightening to us. So by knowing, we find freedom. Fear, we can release ourselves from the, the fear of implications of a, a diagnosis that sometimes we think, oh, once I get diagnosed, once I, I know the truth, I, I'll, it'll impact all of my relationships. I'll never find a job again. I'll never be happy. I'll never, I'll never have this freedom. That's just not true. Knowing the truth can set us free. It can set us free from the fear of not being accepted by others. Because we know when we accept the truth and get that treatment, we can be accepted. We can be truly known by others. Keeping it 100 can enable those who are fearful about mental health issues to face their fears in new and healthy ways and, and to propel them towards new possibilities. But it's not a freedom that, you know, a path to freedom that we experience alone. We do it together. So I invite you today, I, I, I challenge you, I, you know, bring it up for you. Like, let's keep it all 100. When we talk about mental illness, let's, let's do that truth setting. Let's, let's speak the truth in love. Let's speak the truth to power to bring about changes in our system. Let's keep it 100. Let's journey together. So each week, uh, what we've been doing is taking um, this little list of things from the WISE Mental Health, the UCC Mental Health Network, and looking at one thing we can do. Last week, we talked about being a friend and reaching out to, to just one other person um, who might be dealing with mental illness, either um, at an individual level or a family member or a friend. So hopefully you rose to the occasion and did that challenge. Hopefully you did that. I won't make you raise your hand, but hopefully. So this week, I'm going to ask you to do um, and embrace the second challenge, and that is to be an inspiration, to share your own story. 
the reality of the matter is that almost I would imagine every single one of us has been impacted by mental illness, either through our family or ourselves or a friend. So would you be willing this week to share that story with someone else? Call up a friend, have coffee with a friend, maybe text message with a friend, but share your story. Because I think by, by helping us speak the truth about our reality, the truth is out there. And then we begin to change the narrative and we give people that freedom, that freedom then to talk about their own experiences. So this week, be an inspiration, share your story. And we are, um, each week while we've been doing this WISE series, we've asked a member of our congregation to share their story of mental health. Um, this week, because um, we're focusing on PTSD and trauma, um, we actually decided not to have an individual share their story because if it's PTSD and trauma and you're talking about it, it might actually trigger another episode. So instead of having um, someone from our, our faith family share their story, I'm going to share with you a video from the mental health child, uh, the mental health channel network. And you can go to YouTube and you can see all of these videos, the mental health challenge, just put that right in your YouTube search, or you can even Google it. They have a website and there's a lot of stories there that you can watch and listen to and share um, as, um, as you join us on this road to kind of understand and appreciate and embrace the truth about all of these different forms of mental health issues. So this, um, the story I'm going to share with you today is called The Warrior Within, and it's a story about a man returning from Vietnam. So I am just going to also put out there that if you think that um, this might be a trigger for you, there is nothing graphic in um, the video at all. But if you feel like even hearing the story might trigger something, um, a trauma, a traumatic experience within you, um, the video is about six minutes long. So maybe you just kind of want to walk away for six minutes or turn off your video or turn off your sound um, for the next six minutes and then, and then join us later. We've all had instances where we've hurt somebody with something we've said and felt bad about it. What do you think about killing people? And if you really think about it, I mean, you can get into all kinds of karmic resonances from it. You know, I'm a terrible person. Killing another human being is, uh, a lot takes place, whether you think it does or not. You know, as a young man, it's a very romantic thing to fight for the freedom of people. Oh, fighting for the freedom of people? What higher calling could you do to free people? When I came back, as Vietnam veterans came back, we were valueless. And they told us and made sure we knew we were valueless. It took me almost 10 years after the war to have a clear thought about what the hell happened. Vietnam, okay, yeah, come on back. I'm still in the jungle, see, I'm walking through stuff, pushing it out of the way. <laughs> By the time I got to Vietnam, I was 21 years old. There were instances where people like me, Green Berets, we have control over a large group of people. We have our own armies. And one of the most frustrating things with me was people get shot, people get blown up. They're asking for your help and you got people shooting at you. You can't help them. There's nothing you can do. Then after it's all over, they're dead. And you, you know, you, you're so frustrated not being able to, to save somebody or help somebody. So we come back into ordinary life and somebody threatens you subtly or something. And right away, you revert back to not dying, not giving in, not giving an inch, and you rage against it. And this is a big thing with PTSD, overreaction. And I'd heard about Tai Chi. It was different from anything I'd ever heard about because I was taught to be hard and fast. 
Tai Chi was just the opposite. Some of the tensions we have may be very easy to let go of. Other things, traumas, old patterns, they may take a while to let go of. With the Tai Chi, we do these little exercises, and these exercises help us explore the body, and most importantly, the mind that's in this body. In doing so, your tensions will be revealed to you. Physical tensions, emotional tensions, mental tensions. In becoming aware of them, we use this awareness to help us let go. If you have known me 40 years ago, you see me coming, you turn around and go the other way, seriously. PTSD experiences are so traumatic, we don't ever want to feel again. So one of the things we do to prevent that is we avoid the stressors, which is we withdraw from life. And that's a terrible place to be, really, to have something wonderful happen and you feel nothing, or something terrible happen, you feel nothing. So during the Vietnam War and after the war, tens of thousands of men committed suicide without ever knowing what was wrong with themselves or what was going on. No one helped them. Tai Chi is a martial art, and martial art always has a spiritual element. When my world was falling apart, even if I had medication and still falling apart, I would go practice because I knew it was supposed to heal me. And one of the things that veterans learn, any, any human being learns, is once you learn about healing and what it means to be human, you have a genuine interest in helping other people. And this is one of the things I do. I'm sort of always on patrol. Go out in the woods, because that's where the vets are, and find them and get to know them. And I use my life to help veterans and other people. One of the biggest things I think that veterans need, the combat veterans especially, they need the time and space to heal themselves. Being in nature and being present to where you are in nature, it's a natural medicine to heal us. It's a slow acting thing, but it does heal us. because nature is such that the nature of being human is the body tries to heal itself. You get a cut, it heals itself. You know, you have psychological injuries, it will try and heal itself. And just being connected to the earth is a good thing because it will draw things out of me that I try to hold on to. strengthen myself and what I have to strengthen myself for is not anything out here it's what's going on in here So who's up for some Tai Chi? I feel like we need to start a class on it now. So I challenge you to, you know, I know, I know I can see the Zoom chat and I know some people were sharing stories and, and probably likewise on Facebook. So keep those stories going, you know, find somebody this week um, to reach out to and sharing that story. Cause um, I think telling that truth um, about our own experiences and the experiences of the people that we love um, is truly um, a freeing experience. So keep it going, my friends.
now we've come to the time in our worship when um, we have an opportunity to respond to all goodness, all God's goodness to us. So just remind you, if you're part of Journey, we have guilt-free give, giving for everybody else. But if you do want to make a donation that you can do so online, mailing it to our post office box or sticking it in my mailbox um, right outside our house. And so while you contemplate the gifts and your thanksgiving to God and your gratitude to God for all things that we receive. Um, the band has recorded a new song entitled Strong Tower. When I wander through the desert and I'm longing for my home, all my dreams have gone Stranded in the valley, and I'm tired and all alone. Seems like I've lost my way. I go running to your mountain. Great mercy sets me free. You are my strong tower. you, um, if you would, to join me in our prayer of dedication. God, receive our gifts and give us open hands. Fill our lives and give us open hearts. Touch us with your word and give us open minds. Bless this church and give us open doors. Amen. 
So we have opportunity now to um, share both our joys and our concerns with one another. If you're on Zoom in a little while, I will invite you if you want to unmute yourself and to share your concern um, verbally. Or if you're more comfortable on Zoom, you can put it in the chat feature on Facebook. You can put it in the comment section if you want, or if you want to keep it a little bit more private, you can um, text message me or email me at any point point and then we'll send them out as prayer concerns um, later today, put them all together. So um, as we begin, ooh, as we begin to consider our prayers, we light some candles um, to uh, remind us of the focus of our prayers today. And so we light the first candle for those who have lost loved ones um, and who continue to feel the waves of grief. We light this candle for all those who are sick and recovering from any physical ailment. We light this candle for all those who live with any form of mental health challenge, depression, anxiety, PTSD, Alzheimer's or addiction and substance abuse. We light that candle for anyone today who might be feeling alone and isolated, who might be afraid, um, particularly in this time of pandemic. We light this candle for anyone who might be struggling for the basic necessities of life. Those people who find themselves enslaved by all of the injustices of our world. We light this candle for all of those who are treated unfairly simply because of the color of their skin. We light this candle for those around our world who feel the ripple effects of climate change and all the natural catastrophes that they bring, those who experience fires and hurricanes, storms, drought, and more. And finally, we light this candle for all of those, all of the many concerns that we offer up silently in our hearts and our minds. So if you are on Zoom and you have a prayer um, concern to share, you can unmute yourself and share that with us now if you would like. All right, sounds like there's none today. So please join your hearts and your minds with me now as we pray for the needs of our world. Gracious God, we come before you today recognizing you as the source of all truth. And we recognize that in this moment, your truth is that you love us and care for us unconditionally with so much love that it fills us over and over again. And, and so we thank you. We offer up to you our gratitude for the many ways that we have seen your love displayed in our world, in our lives, in the, the lives of those that we care about. We, we thank you for the answers to prayer that we've seen and your power displayed in, in creation and in our world and in our lives and in our interactions with each other. And claiming the truth, oh God, that you will never forsake us, we offer up to you our concerns today. So you have seen the concerns that um, we've printed now in our, our chat and our comments. You've heard the concerns that we've lifted up during our candle lighting. And we offer all of those along with all of the little silent things that are on our hearts and our minds, but are, are perhaps too sacred to even mention out loud. And we place them in your care, recognizing the truth that you hear our prayers and you answer our prayers. Amen. So some announcements for this week. And just a reminder, I think most of you by this time are getting the emails with all the Zoom links and information. If you're not, just shoot me um, your email and I'll add you to the weekly listserv so that every Monday you get those. So Tuesday, we are continuing our Wise Weeks um, 
we follow every Sunday with a, a Tuesday forum focusing on the same topic. So this week, um, Lisa Good from an organization called Urban Grief right here in Albany will be with us to talk a little bit about trauma and PTSD. And I really challenge you, you know, to, to Zoom with us if at all possible. We had a fabulous sec session um, last week with Dr. Bob. Um, really good information with some practical advice and some discussion about how we can help each other. And I think, um, you know, the tendency, I think with mental illness is like I said, the myth before uh, that we buy into sometimes is well, it doesn't impact me. So, you know, the less I know, maybe the better. Um, and I think the wise forum um, helps us address that kind of myth um, because they're, freedom comes with truth. And um, Lisa this week will be speaking the truth. And I think the more we know about this, the more we can interact with each other, the more we can be a part of a healing society at large in our world. So join us for that Zoom. I know if, if Tuesday nights at 7.30 don't work for you, we are recording these and we're putting them on our YouTube channel. So you can watch them um, later in the week. And just as kind of an introduction to what um, to Lisa, we had Lisa with, at our church before, um, but I have a short little minute video of introduction to Lisa Good and to, and to Urban Grief. Well, I go back to my community empowered I go back to my community connected because I know that I have a network of other grassroots providers who have walked this trail. When I hear what other people are doing, it inspires me to reach for more and to continue to persevere knowing that I'm not alone and that we are on the right track community or a world where healing is really embraced would not just look at the psychological aspects of trauma and grief, but it would also look at the structural um, aspects that exist within our neighborhoods and within our cities that actually cause harm, but also present barriers to healing after harm. I am a part of the solution. Amen for Lisa. And so I just want to have uh, share with you some other announcements also for this month. Um, during this month, we're um, the collection of the month is eyeglasses. So, you know, dig through all of those junk drawers and dressers and things that you, um, you know, have at your house. And if you have eyeglasses that you no longer use, you can bring them to worship on May 9, or you can place them in the bin next to my house. And Christine Kilmartin will be donating those to an organization that can use them um, for somebody else and re-gift them. Our family promise week is coming up. And so we have another week um, that we'll be making the meals for our family promise guests. Um, once again, they're sheltering in place. So we won't do the regular hosting like we do usually do at the church. Um, but we will um, be asking for the meals. And I know some of you already signed up. So here's the deal. Um, we have one of those little Thrivent grants and we'll buy all the ingredients um, and then we'll deliver those ingredients to your home. You may Make the meal and you deliver it to Family Promise on the night that you signed up sometime between around 6 or 6.30 and then the guests enjoy it. So um, I know we have a couple nights left. Um, check out the Sign Up Genius um, and the links for all of this will also be in the e-news that comes out on Monday if you want to help out with that. Um, save the date. Also, the, the first week in May, Family Promise is going to have their fundraiser, their spring fundraiser, but it's going to be online. So there's some auction baskets um, and you can kind of log on and find out if you'd like to make a donation or bid on something. Or if bidding and an auction basket is not your thing, you can just make an outright donation to keep Family Promise going. Um, there are some events that are happening. Our um, leadership team has developed some fun-filled events coming up, um, particularly great things that are going to happen in person. So um, Cinco de Mayo on May 5, um, Christine and Dick have invited us out to the lake. Um, you need to wear a mask and you need to practice social distancing when at all possible, but from 6 to 9 on May 5. And you do need to sign up. 
um, on Sign Up Genius. Don't sign up on Facebook, sign up on Sign Up, sign up Genius. If you are having trouble doing that, making that happen, then text me and I'll sign you up. But we do need for contact tracing and, and quantity, um, we need to know who's coming. And May 8th, the same thing. We have a fun-filled live music night with Rick Bedrosian. Um, some of you know Rick from Hair of the Dog. And so we will be gathering on his deck in Del Mar. Um, and we can have up to 20 people. The music is from 7 to 8. It's on a Saturday night. Once again, need you to sign up because we can only have 20 people. You got to bring your own chair. Um, but it'll be a great night of music. Uh, May 31, Beth and Elaine have invited us over to their house for a Memorial Day gathering. So once again, use Sign Up Genius. That's at four and keep that in mind if you want to join the fun with that. And some other things we don't have the dates for yet, but Dave and Cindy are going to have us over for a fire pit. Um, and we are trying to find a night to go to the drive-in theater in Jericho. Um, it'll also be one of those safe, wonderful events. And um, so there, if you have um, an, oh, forgot to say, <laughs> leaders leadership team has also made the commitment to offering um, in-person worship at the park, the new Scotland Town Park, the second Sunday of each month. So just mark it on your calendar, the second Sunday of each month, May through September, um, we will be at a park um, and we'll have worship in person once a month. Great. So if you have um, a plan, that might include others, either something on Zoom, we're still doing those Zoom, Zoom, Zoom events, like you wanna maybe host a game night or you wanna show us how to cook something, that'd be great. Or if you want to do something in person, you got an idea where we can meet, a nature walk, um, some other event, let us know. We will definitely help you make it happen, okay? But we need you to kind of take the lead and uh, get us started, so. Um, here our blessing and our sending today. This is from Touch Holiness by Ruth Duck. God sends us forth from the gathered church to be ambassadors for Christ, to, to lift instead of lean, to help instead of hinder. Let us go claim a corner of the world for God. May the Holy Spirit go with you and abide with you now and forever. Amen. And our closing song is a, a hymn entitled Help Us Accept Each Other. Oh.